dealing with loss. Predictive modeling is usually based on optimization. Uh, maximum entropy, minimum error, maximum likelihood, and so on. Uh, the objective whose minimization implies a predictive model is called a loss function. So predictive models usually come to us via optimization. So if we have a variable y associated with some set of outcomes, O1 up to O capital M, the true distribution corresponds to the process that assigns a class to the observation. And the data is produced by that process. And a predictive model is an algorithm whose goal is to approximate the true distribution that's unknown because it's in the process that we're studying. Then usually, or very often, we'll set up uh, scenarios where a piece of true of y is a maximum or a minimum of some objective, and the predictive model is the algorithm that takes us toward that max or min. So we're always minimizing or maximizing. So remember, we looked at maximizing information gain and decision trees, maximum entropy models, maximum margin and support vector machines, error minimization and artificial neural networks, uh, the stochastic choice of a training uh, term to minimize at any time. There was one big exception, and that was K nearest neighbor networks. Now we'll call the objective of maximizing or minimizing a loss function. And often uh, we want to think only in terms of loss function minimization. So if we had a scenario where we needed to maximize something, then that's the same as simply minimizing its negative. So gain can be studied as loss, and therefore we can talk about loss functions even when we're maximizing. Now what characterizes these loss functions? Well typically their minima are not easy to find. They often must be approximated using gradient descent. There are often many minima, some spurious and some useful. And convexity is very important. Now there's a course called Operations Research which is an in-depth study of optimization and loss which takes full advantage of this concept of convexity. Now, we could have actually done this entire course uh, based on the optimization of loss functions. Neural networks are specified by a type of loss. Uh, we could have introduced this concept of a penalty, which is a term added to a loss function to force its parameters to satisfy certain constraints. Uh, regularization. Those are terms added to a loss function to force its minimum to have some property. For instance, if we want sparse matrices to be the results when working with sparse data, then uh, that's usually what's called an L1 regularization. And sometimes we use regularization to force uh, any or all matrices in the loss function to be invertible. So for example, uh, loss is a fundamental concept. We looked at Hopfield networks, which was the energy minimization, where E is this negative one half, the sum over I J W sub I J X sub I X sub J plus the sum theta sub I X sub I. So we didn't get universal representations, though, with Hopfield networks. That requires a hidden layer. So it just makes sense that we would somehow try to combine Hopfield networks with hidden layers. And that's what's known as a Boltzmann machine. And what we get is training via energy minimization and universality in the sense of multilayer perceptrons. So a restricted Boltzmann machine uh, comes from the idea that Hopfield networks are essentially what are known as icing spin glass models in statistical mechanics. But when we add a hidden layer, which will allow us to have a universal classifier or a universal machine, uh, then it's only two layers, but the visible here is going to play the same role as the input and the output layers. So you can think of this as visible, goes to hidden, goes back to visible. And the hidden layer allows universality, but it also means we have to re apply the full Boltzmann statistical mechanics. So 
A restricted Boltzmann machine has an energy which is very Hopfield like. So we let x denote uh, the xi values of the visible units and h be the h sub j values of the hidden units, the hidden layer. So x for visible, h for hidden. And the energy of an x, a set of x values, a set of h values, jointly is the negative sum over ij, w sub ij, x sub i, h sub j, minus the sum over i, theta sub i, x sub i, minus the sum over j, psi sub j, h sub j. And then we can talk about the probability of an xh pair as being uh, an exponential of the negative of the energy. And we have to divide by z, which is sum of over all possible xh pairs so that we get uh, the sum of all the probabilities is 1. Now the goal is the true distribution of a data set uh, as the visible layer marginal. In other words, the hidden layer is just a helper layer. What we really want is to use the visible layer to reproduce a uh, probability. So the marginal probability uh, on the visible layer is just the sum over all possible h's of the joint p of x comma h which is 1 over z times the sum over all possible h of e to the negative energy of x comma h. Now z here is difficult to calculate because there's exponentially many different ways of choosing values for x and h even when we restrict x and h to simply be uh, uh, ones and zeros or ones and negative ones. Now these weights are parameters and so it's no surprise that you can actually find these parameters using a thing called stochastic maximum likelihood which is similar to back propagation. And we'll look at the Boltzmann machine on the final exam. It's actually a neural network that combines the, the two ideas of the universality of the three layer network and the energy minimization of the Hopfield network. But SK Learn will make it available to us in much the same way that it always does. We'll create a classifier object, we'll do a fit, and then we'll make a prediction. And we'll validate and measure using metrics. So why didn't we take the loss approach for the entire course? Well, there's a couple of answers. The one that's most important to me is that the loss approach does not address or model complex networks or multiple scales. It gives us the algorithms because the algorithms come from the loss minimization uh, attempt. Now I don't want to uh, over promote K nearest neighbors networks but they are outside of this whole loss based idea because they really aren't designed using some kind of objective, uh, some kind of overall objective, uh, but they are a good start. Now a key concept here is that Hopfield networks they have the spurious states uh, and the reason that they have some of these very big issues is because of their all connected nature. Whereas Boltzmann machines are what are called bipartite graphs three-layer artificial neural networks are directed tripartite graphs and decision trees are no big surprise trees. Real networks tend to be scale free in small world. So I've shown you here this is actually the neural network of C. elegans which is a type of a worm actually. Now let's look at C. elegans. Here is the uh, degree distribution of the connectome uh, for the uh, that's the graph of the neuron connections and this is in a log log scale and we get uh, approximately linear so this is a power law distribution scale free. The average path length is 2.46 uh, the average clustering coefficient is 0 0.284 now if we were to create an Erdős Renyi random network uh, using these vertices and 
uh, then it would have had a, a clustering coefficient of 0 0.05. So we have high clustering, low average path length, and we have hubs. So in this representation, the hubs have been drawn as larger vertices. And I've pointed out a few of them here. Moreover, the simplest concept of loss may be all that's really necessary. So let's suppose we say that the features X cause the class Y to occur and y hat denotes the prediction of what x causes and y star denotes the actual value of what x causes. So our model here is p of y given x conditioned upon x so x causing y in some sense. So the loss for a given observation x is a function little l of sub x of the prediction versus the uh, y star the actual and then you can do the total loss for a, a prediction. Just add up over all the possible uh, actual outcomes. No, these y stars. Now a 0, 1 loss occurs if we just let the little l sub x of y hat y star be 0 if they're the same and 1 otherwise. So that means we get the minimum when these two are the same and that would actually change our total loss function in simply 1 minus the probability of y hat given x. So minimizing loss is a central theme in predictive modeling and machine learning. Machine learning is really all about loss and predictive modeling includes machine learning but complex underlying structure is also a central theme in predictive modeling. Even a simple k nearest neighbor networks is often a better approach than a loss based approach, especially when we combine it with boosting, which is what we look at next.